Welcome to the Warrior Wood Shop. On this episode, we're going to build a wooden wall flag. I'm Mr. Rodaway. On this one, I've got Turner, one of the junior Warrior Wood Shop students. Actually, he's a junior. And a couple years ago, he built one of these for a friend of the family and took it to the Missouri State Industrial Arts Competition and won first place in his division. So on this episode, we're going to document the process. So he's going to take the lead on this video and show you what we did. Alright, we let these dry overnight, now we gotta unclamp them and head over to the planer. Here we are at the planer, we are going to planer these down to rough level. You don't want them down to your exact width just quite yet, we'll do that later with the wide belt sander. So here we are at the panel saw. We have to square up this edge because it's going to be what goes up against your union. Now we have to square up one edge of the union. If you don't have a panel saw, you can do this with a circular saw and a straight edge. All right, below me, he's got the large flag laid out. We're going to use this one as an example to explain what we're doing. You notice that we didn't cut the lower stripes to length yet because they're going to hang over each side. What we're, But we did square up one end of the upper stripes and one end of the union. We're focused on this T joint right here. We're focused on that T joint. So that's why we squared up one end of each and obviously this is already straight from running across table saw. Hence why we already made these to the final width. So hopefully I put you in an understanding of what we're trying to get done is focus on that T. Alright, so we've got them all, all of our edges square, and now our next step will be doing the biscuits. So we'll need to get our biscuits and biscuit cutter out. This is the last one. Oh, I don't mean that. I mean one of these. So we, oh, those kind of biscuits. So we use biscuits since we're doing an ingrain to ingrain glue up. These need just kind of more, a little bit extra structure. So these will go in the middle about right there and we use our biscuit cutter and they slide into a slot. You just glue them in. All right, so the first step of biscuits will actually be marking out where they're gonna go. So you just do a pencil line on both sections of your glue up. Now, down here on these two pieces, it's not needed, but on all my flags, I've done them, so that way it gives it more structure and it's easier when it comes to sanding. Alright, so now we got to make the holes for your biscuits. You take your biscuit cutter, you put it up against your piece, it's all up against the piece of the wood, you, you line up your center line with their line. And there you go. So we've got all our biscuits cut. Now you need to make sure when you're doing these to put glue in the biscuit hole also. Both of them, both sides. Make 
sure after you uh, get it all over your finger, you grab your wet rag and you clean your fingers off so you don't end up with some unexpected uh, blue spots. tighten the clamps at this point because we got to force in two different directions. Oops. You want to open that up? And I'll lay these down. And this, they're laying down so that way we can put a clamp over the top to have that equal and opposite pressure. If, you, if you're in my class you understand what I'm doing here. But if you don't, lift that up some more. The steel and glue creates a, a chemical reaction that creates a stain. So just by raising it off the surface. That'll help prevent that. Snug. Snug. You can see this is with a five minute window, this is not a one person job on this large flag. Last thing you want to check for everything's laying flat on those bottom clamps, and we're doing good. Especially if you're not doing a wide belt in. But the more you clean off, the less you go to clean up later. Hopefully now it's starting to make more sense why we made everything too large in the beginning because now we can cut off our ends to make this final size and we don't have to worry about anything being possibly too short. Alright, we let it set and dry overnight. So now the next step is we sand the surfaces flat. You can do that with your portable belt sander or here at the Warrior Wood Shop we use our wide belt sander. All right, so if you remember correctly, we made the union a little bit too big, so now we need to cut it down to the final width of the flag. All right, so now the next step will be cutting our union to its final length. So obviously we made this and our stripes too long, so what we need to do is cut this to our final length so we can hook a tape measure here in measure for the final length. What we need to do, I suggest using a ruler. This makes it a little bit easier. You can line it up instead of having a tape measure. And once you've made your mark, make the line go the whole length of the board, especially if you're using a circular saw. Now that that end is cut the final length, we can measure for the full length of the flag. back to a straight 90 degree side. Alright, we're cutting 
cut the top piece now and to make it work as the cleat system, we are cutting it at a 45 degree angle. step in our process is marking these so we can cut them to final length. Alright, now that we've got these frame pieces, the outer frame pieces cut to length, we're going to glue and nail it on the edge. So the next step, we have to measure out our lengths for the top and bottom pieces. It's always safe to wait until they're attached, the side pieces, before you measure for the final cut. Alright, make sure that your angle is facing the back of your flag and it's at the bottom of the piece. Uh, 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 uh. What? Don't nail into your angle. Also make sure you don't nail too low. Alright, so this is the piece that you'll attach to your wall. You'll put it on the wall, and it just slides in like that. And when you, I, I like to cut mine short, so that way on your wall, wherever you're putting it, in case your cleat board is not centered, you can always slide the flag and center it. Alright, so the next step is burning it, and we got to take it outside so we don't set off our smoke detectors. You also might be wondering why we did this frame before we burned it. So in the past, just to, to, between making a, a, a lot of these flags, we've learned that the heat will actually warp the lumber. So we put this backing panel on there to keep it from warping. Also, you have to burn these edges anyway to make it look nice. Alright, so we're here taping this flag to get ready for stain. You want to make sure that you get frog tape. We've done it with the blue, the blue painter's tape. It did not turn out well at all. So make sure you get the green frog tape. Just got to be very careful. And just little things while you're doing this help make it look ten times better in the end result. So just take your time with this. Don't rush it. Another thing you want to do is make sure you tape over the ends. So that way your ends are according to what color your stripe is and not all just mixed stain. And then the last most important thing you want to do is get some sort of roller and roll this whole tape line. That'll just stick it down really nice. Stain is a lot thinner than paint so that's why this is very important that you do. As you can see all that time and effort and that taping pulled up paid off because when we pull it off, we get this nice, clean, sharp tape line from the white to the red. I'm very happy with it. Our next step will be to let this dry overnight, tape off for the union, stain that blue, send it off to the CNC. And we're going to apply a two or three coats of an awesome looking high gloss clear coat. Well, that about wraps it up for this one. If you like this project, make sure to like and subscribe so you can find out when we're coming out with the dresser that'll kind of complement this project. I got some sawdust. That's so dumb.